Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the second video in IB Physics Topic 5, Electricity and Magnetism, where we will be looking at voltage, current, resistance and power. In our previous video, we learnt about charges and electric fields. But how are these related to electricity? Well, electricity is the movement of charge, which can be described by voltage, current and resistance. Let's start by looking at voltage. Remember from our fourth Topic 2 video that when an object moves in the direction of an applied force, work is being done on the object. So if a test charge in an electric field moves in the direction of the exerted electrostatic force, work is done on the charge. This is the voltage V, officially defined as the work done per unit charge and measured in volts. The formula for this is voltage equals work divided by charge. However, voltage typically applies to large-scale movements of electrons. When work is done on a single electron, it is measured in electron volts, EV. To convert, moving an electron through 1 volt is 1 electron volt, which is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let's review this with a practice question. An electron is moved from a negative terminal to the positive terminal of a 6 volt battery. What is the work exerted on it in electron volts? The long solution is to use the equation voltage equals work divided by charge. Then substituting in the values for voltage and electron charge, solving for work and converting to electron volts. This gives the work performed as 6 electron volts. The short solution is realising that moving 1 electron through 1 volt is 1 electron volt, so moving 1 electron through 6 volts is 6 electron volts. This is a useful exam trick for any question like this. You may also hear voltage referred to as potential difference, PD, and you can use both terms interchangeably. But what does potential difference mean? Well, if you place test charge right next to a charge distribution and then move it, we know that work is being done on the test charge. As a result, the test charge gains energy, called its electric potential energy or electric potential. Right next to the charge distribution, it had no electric potential, but further away from it, it now has electric potential. It is this change in potential that is called the potential difference. However, this is functionally the same as voltage, and thus both terms can be used. It should be noted that potential difference is more often used when discussing individual charge movement, whilst voltage is more often used when discussing circuits. So now that we know what voltage is, what is current? Well, when there is a potential difference across an object, there is a positive charge distribution at one end and a negative charge distribution at the other. We know this causes an electric field with an electrostatic force going from positive to negative. As a result, any charge placed within this field will move through the object. Current I is defined as the rate of flow of charge and measured in amperes A. The formula for this is current equals change in charge divided by change in time. There are two types of current you need to be aware of. Direct current, known as DC, which is current that flows in one direction only, and alternating current, known as AC, which is current that constantly switches direction. Higher level students will learn more about the generation and use of AC in our Topic 11 video series. Conductors are materials that allow the flow of charge and are typically graphite and metals such as copper, aluminium and iron. However, current does not flow across all materials. Insulators are such materials that prevent the flow of charge, typically plastics, rubber, wood and glass. Conductors are often used to produce wires, and insulators are used to coat them. Within these wires, electrons are the charge that move and create current. It is worth noting here that all of the aforementioned electric field definitions were based off test charges, which are positive. However, electrons are negatively charged, so they travel in the opposite direction of the current, i.e. from negative to positive. For your IB physics exam, you need to be able to calculate the current in a metal wire using a formula called the drift speed equation. It relates the number of charges n, cross-sectional area of the wire a in meters squared, charge value q in coulombs, and their speed v in meters per second. The formula is Current equals number of charges times cross-sectional area times speed times charge value. Let's review this with a practice question. A 1.6mm diameter silver wire has a current of 7.5 amps. 
In a single cross section, there are two moles of electrons. What is the drift speed of the electrons? The equation to use for this is current equals number of charges times cross sectional area times speed times charge value. First, the number of charges is calculated as moles times Avogadro's number. Then the cross-sectional area is calculated as pi times radius squared. Then we substitute in the values for current, number of charges, cross-sectional area and electron charge. After simplifying, the drift speed of the electrons is calculated as 19 meters per second. You not only need to be able to calculate in wires, but also in whole circuits, which will be covered in our next IB Physics Topic 5 video. Importantly, within such circuits, current does not always flow at the same speed. This is due to resistance. Resistance, R, is officially defined as the ratio of voltage to current and is measured in ohms. However, this is hard to comprehend. Conceptually, it is the degree of opposition to the flow of current when a material has a positive difference across it. This is because flowing charges collide with atoms and impurities, slowing down their flow. Remember that voltage is the driving force behind current, thus a material's resistance determines the value of the current. The formula for this relationship is given by voltage equals current times resistance. This can understandably be rearranged for both current and resistance. So current is voltage divided by resistance and resistance is voltage divided by current. Notice how this formula matches the definition of resistance. Now that you understand how resistance arises, it should be noted that all materials resist current in varying degrees. However, all materials have some resistance, even conducting wires. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.